Hey everybody, welcome to the channel today. I'm Cliff with T-Wade's Barbecue Treats, man. So, glad you guys could join us today. So today we're gonna do something way different than we have ever done on this channel before. We're gonna do a chuck roast. Um, we're gonna do this on the Kamado Joe today. We're gonna cook between 250 and 275. Been seeing a lot of stuff out there on YouTube about chuck roasts and uh, that it's a great alternative to brisket. So, brisket's expensive, man. So, uh, I don't know I don't know about you guys in your areas, but down here in South Mississippi, it's like $50 for a brisket. So, and that's a decent packer, packer brisket, you know. We're not talking a huge, huge 16, 17 pound brisket. We're talking more like 10 to 12 pound brisket. So, um, I figured I would do this today because this is a, a good economical way to maybe do a brisket. And maybe some of you guys are looking for a cheaper way to do do something like a brisket. You know, you want to do it, but you don't want to put the money out. And you're afraid that if you do put the money out, you're going to ruin this really expensive piece of meat, which was first time I started doing briskets. That's what I worried about. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to kind of see if I can show you guys how to do a better, more economical way of getting close to a brisket. But we know, obviously, we know a chuck roast is not a brisket. But I've heard from a lot of people. I've seen a lot of videos. I've seen a lot of chatter on YouTube about this is the closest thing as you can get to a brisket. So we're going to do it today, man. We're going to cook this thing. Um, probably going to go for about six, between anywhere between six and eight hours. But again, don't want to go off time. We just kind of want to let it get on that grill, let it smoke real low and slow, see how tender it's getting. And we're looking for an internal temp between 200 to 210 degrees today. But mainly we just want to make sure it's tender. So hope you guys are excited about this one. We're going to season this bad boy up. We're going to show you all what we're doing here. So hang around guys and come on back to see this chuck roast, man. I think you're gonna be impressed. get to seasoning this thing so what we're going to season or what we're going to use as a binder today is a Worcestershire sauce um this is good on beef man this is just a really good beef you could use olive oil you could use other stuff too but I'm gonna go with this because this gives beef just a little bit of an added element of flavor and um you know like we talked about earlier this is an economical piece of meat this is the poor man's brisket at least that's what it's dubbed it's dubbed the poor man's brisket so let's go ahead and just get this on here so we can get some seasoning on here this is not quite a four pound chuck uh, roast. It's about three, almost three and a half pounds. I paid $13 for this cut. So, I mean, obviously that's a that's a pretty cheap comparison to brisket. I mean, you look in briskets, you're looking way more than that, three times that amount, and probably even more than that. But we're gonna just get this, get this on here. And then what I'm using it as a seasoning today, guys, is a Traeger prime rib rub. I've used this on a couple other videos. If you guys have seen any of my other videos, I've done burger cooks uh, where I've used this. Um, I've used this just on various beef recipes that I do here at home. So one thing I will say about this one is it has, this does have sugar in it. It's got cane sugar, salt, spices, garlic, paprika, onion, chili, chili pepper, and sunflower oil. Um, you may not want to go with one with sugar. Uh, I'm going to give this a shot today, but this is all I have in the house, like as far as beef rubs. So we're real scarce on rubs right now, so I'm just going to have to roll with what I got, and this is what I got, so that's what I'm going to go with. So let's go ahead and get, get it on there. I'm going to try not to touch nothing with this hand. I think it's going to be fine, even with a little bit of sugar in it. We're cooking it low and slow. I think it'll be fine. You know, be pretty liberal with your seasoning. I like season. We love season, so. And what I like to try to make sure is I get my ends here. Traeger, I have found that their seasonings are pretty, they're pretty good. Um, I've used quite a few of them. I've used some for my ribs, uh, my pork butts. I ha there's an apple honey rub they have that is really out of this world, so. If you're looking for something for ribs, Traeger's got a good one. I'm 
We get the, we're gonna get this the rest of the way season. My Kamado, we're cooking this on a Kamado Joe today. Um, gonna have this, like I said, between 250, 275. My grill's already going, it's ready to go outside. So literally all we're gonna do, man, is I'm just gonna take this out. I'm gonna pack this seasoning in here and we're gonna get this out to the grill, guys. So y'all come on outside. Let's get this thing on the grill, man. I'm excited, I hope you are too. All right, guys, so here's our, here's our chuck roast all seasoned up. I just love that smell. That rosemary and garlic, man, that just smells so good on there. So I think that's gonna be amazing. Right now, our Joe jumped up on me while I was inside. It got to about 300, but when I put this piece of meat on here, it's gonna bring that down and we'll be able to regulate our temps as we go through the cook. So one thing you gotta keep in mind with these ceramics is they will get out of control on you if you don't keep, keep track of them real closely. So, <clears throat> and as you guys see, I've got me a little temperature probe here on my grate to kind of monitor what's going on inside my pit. And I'm gonna have one inside my meat also. Like I said, we're trying to get to about a 200, internal of about 200-ish, but don't go just by that. We're gonna just probe this thing when it gets close to 200 and we're gonna see how tender it is. And here's my other probe. I'm just sticking it kind of in the middle of my thick part of my meat here so we can monitor. And I've got an app on my phone. I'm using a Weber eye grill today and there's an app on my phone where I can sit inside and I can kind of monitor this thing. So been pretty impressed with the little the little Weber eye grill. So um, I'll probably do a review on that at a later date. But uh, yeah, just real convenient to be able to sit inside and kind of monitor my temps while I'm inside. It's kind of a nasty day out here today. We're getting a little rain, so I don't have to actually sit out here and, and man this thing full time. So let's go ahead and get this thing shut. Um, I think we're gonna regulate our temp. Our temp was 300, but with that cold meat on there, that's gonna bring that temperature down. So. All right, guys, we're going to let this go, and I'll come back to you guys in about an hour and kind of show you guys how this thing's crusting up, how it's looking. I think it's going to be great, guys, so hang in there, guys. Come on back. All right, guys, so we're about three hours into this cook, and uh, we've hit 160, so we're treating this just like a brisket. We would pull this and wrap this at 160 or 165, so um, we're sitting at about right at 160, so saying 158. But we're going to go ahead and pull it and we're going to go ahead and put it in our pan here. So what we're doing today is we got a pan. Um, we're not going to wrap this like a traditional brisket though. So what we're going to do is we're, we've put a, an onion Lipton packet, the packets that you can make dips and soups and all kinds of stuff with. You, you can get them at the grocery store. They're just a packet. And uh, we've mixed that with some water and we've made like a broth here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our chuck roast right down in there with it so it can simmer and cook the rest of the way to that internal two to two, 200 to 210, 10 ish is what we're looking for. So, but again, remember guys, we're going for tender here. So, but that's just the baseline we're gonna go by for 200 to 210. So let's go ahead and look at this thing. Woo, boy, it's looking good guys. You know what guys, I'm sitting at 158 right now. I think I'm gonna let it go ahead and get to 160. So we're gonna give this a few more minutes and then we're gonna put it in this pan and when we get it in the pan and back on the smoker, we'll come back to you guys. I'm just gonna go ahead and wait. I was gonna go ahead and pull it, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and wait till it gets to 160. So um, we'll see you guys again when we get it in the pan and we got get it on the grill and we'll show y'all that whole process of us getting it on the grill in the pan and kind of show y'all what it looks like in there. And uh, so we can finish out this cook and show you guys what we got. All right, guys. Hey, I was, I was gonna...
guys, so we got up to 164 on our <clears throat> internal temp. The reason I wanted to go back and get over that 160 is because I wanted to get a little bit more color on the roast. So that's why I ended up just kind of backtracking on my video and going back and wanting to get it, get up to that 160 and 162. You know, in the 160 range, anywhere from like 160 to 165 is kind of where you want to pull. You want to get as much color on your on your meat as you can. And so that's why I, I elected not to just pull it at 158. If you guys are wondering why I backtracked, that's why I did. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pull this meat off. I'm going to put it in this pan. Meat's looking amazing, guys. That is really hot. This meat is looking really, really good. So the idea is here, now we're gonna put it in here. We're gonna let these juices kind of cook it the rest of the way. Now you could wrap this in foil just like a brisket, but I've seen a lot of people doing this in the pan. I've never tried it in the pan personally, so I wanna try it in the pan. I wanna see how, how good it can get and how moist it can get. So, I mean, but you can already touch that and feel, I can feel how juicy that is man and how moist it is it's going to be amazing so we're going to go ahead and wrap it and the idea is we're going to let this come up to about 200 but what we're going to do is when we get to 200 is we're going to start probing it see how tender we are and if we're good and tender at 200 then i'm going to pull it if not we'll keep letting it go so what we're going to do is we're going to just put this back on and after we pull this meat we're going to do some potatoes we're going to show you guys some clips of that in the video. Probably not going to go deep into detail on those potatoes, but just kind of show y'all this side we're doing to go with this roast today. So stay tuned, guys. Come on back. We'll see how this roast is probing. We'll show you guys how tender it's probing, and we'll get this one done for you guys. All right, guys, we went ahead and pulled this, man. Didn't take long at all once we put it in the foil. We're probing right around, right around 200. And uh, some spots are probing at like 195, 196, but that's fine. But it's, it's probing tender, guys. That's why I went ahead and pulled it. You can see it's just going in there so easy, so. Super tender. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this up, I'm gonna let it rest. And we're gonna put our potatoes on the grill. Well, we'll see y'all when we get those potatoes on the grill. We'll show you what those are looking like. Let's go ahead and finish out this video for you guys so here's our potatoes we just got them off that's what we was waiting on but while those were cooking we were letting our meat rest and as you guys just saw we were just cutting it up and man it looks amazing guys i don't know i don't know how y'all feel about how it looks but i just look at that i mean that meat is so tender it's juicy you can still see the glistening on it it got a little smoke ring um you know nothing major but you can definitely see a smoke ring in there uh you know again this is a ceramic grill you don't normally see that that real profane smoke ring sometimes in ceramic cookers so i'm happy with it man i'm happy with the way it came out i think it came out great uh and i'm gonna tell you i, I did try a few pieces a while ago and it, to me it it's pretty comparable to brisket man I mean, it's not brisket but it's pretty it's pretty comparable man it's uh it's pretty good i mean it's it obviously there's a difference between brisket and it but i i think if you're trying to substitute and you're you know economically if you're trying to do this for your family this is not a this is not a bad substitute at all so let's go ahead and dip some of these potatoes out I mean, you can see these bad boys these things look so good we put that lipton onion packet on them 
we put some garlic on there and we put the same rub that we put on the chuck roast on it too that prime rib rub and uh we put some more olive oil on there i put a little bit of sea salt on there and i cooked these at about 425 for about 30 minutes so you know just kind of a baseline if you guys are wanting to try to go the same route i just did give you guys an idea anyways i'm just gonna put that in here right now and then we're gonna take some of this sauce man this this broth that we made with that onion packet and we're gonna put it right over the top here Woo! god bless america right there let me grab me a fork let's go ahead and cut into this meat real quick Get a bite of that. Man, that's good. Guys, that's flipping good. Y'all saw how easy that just came off when I bit it. So good. Not pulling quite apart as easy as I would like it. I'd like to see it pull apart a little bit easier. But definitely not pulling apart real tough or anything. So, you know, that may be the difference between this chuck roast and brisket uh, when you cook it just right. But not tough at all. I mean, that sauce on there, very flavorful, very good. Man, that's good. Let's go over these potatoes. We put a little cheese on the top. Man, those are good. We got a little Hawaiian roll over here to finish it off. But man, this is just a this is just a good comfort meal right here. Meat and potatoes. Who doesn't like meat and potatoes? The potatoes actually have a little smoke flavor to them too. That's what's kind of kind of happy about that. I'm you know I'm getting back into that smoke on them, and you can definitely taste the smoke in this chuck roast. So overall, guys, thought this was a good cook. Let me know what y'all think. What, do y'all think this was a good cook? Is this something you would try for your family? Is this an economical thing that you would look into doing versus a brisket? Have some of you done this and then seen that, hey, you like chuck roast more than brisket or do you do you think it's a comparable thing to brisket? So leave me a comment, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Um, from My feeling is it's pretty close, but it's not brisket. Um, you know, I'll be straight up. It's not brisket, but it's pretty darn close. And if you're jonesing for, for some brisket and you don't want to put out the coin for it, I think you can't go wrong by doing a chuck roast. That's my opinion. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, look at the screen here and you'll send me an email at Gmail at my Gmail account. Um, also hit me up on Instagram at TYA's Barbecue Treats, Facebook at TYA's Barbecue Treats. All that will be on the screen there. So if, if you want to hit me up on any of those social media forums, you can look right there and get the address of where you can send me a message to. So guys, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, man. I'm always putting new stuff out. We're always trying to keep it interesting, and we're always trying to do different stuff on different cookers. So we appreciate y'all tuning in today, um, and we hope that you guys will come back and view some more videos we got. <clears throat> Stay tuned for my next video up here somewhere. Go check them out, man. Go check some of my other cooks out. So until next time, guys, that's all I got on this one. We'll see y'all on the next one.